Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is make the base for our sausage dog. And I'm going to do that by using my white Gotland wool bats um, because I like using that as a core. And I'm just going to tear a strip off and I'm going to just make myself a tube. And I'm not overly concerned at the moment what size that tube's going to be because I'm going to base everything else off of the size of this tube. So it's 11 inches by 3 inches if you want to follow along and make this with me. And I'm going to start off by just tucking all those ends in and then just folding it over into a tight tubular shape. And you just want to hold everything really firmly with my left hand. And then I'm just pulling the, the slack with my right hand to get it nice and tightly folded round into um, to kind of like a Swiss roll kind of shape. Then I'm going to take my medium twisted needles and I'm just going to anchor everything down so it can't unravel. And get it all secured into place and once that's all secured I'm then just going to start felting that into my sausage shape, and my tubular shape. So I'm going to make this like a large seed shape um, and then I can add and um, sculpt from there once I've got that basic shape. So I'm just rolling with my hand and then I'm just turning that sausage shape and then felting so I'm getting a nice even felt around it. And then I'm just pushing those fluffy end bits in there. So it's still going to be slightly narrower towards the ends of this tubular shape, like a seed. Um, but I'm just going to felt those fluffy ends in and I'm looking to get it so that it's of medium firmness. So I want it to be relatively firm, but not too firm because I still want to have that ability to felt it a bit more later on and get that shape into it, especially when it comes to felting things in, in like thighs and, and sort of the shape around the belly. So I just roll it with my hands just to kind of get the slackness all kind of dissipated evenly around the ball. Um, apologies the cylinder and then just continuing to felt everything so I'm getting a nice even felt around it just keep turning that and then just keep rolling with your hands as well and then you'll find bits of softness that you want to kind of felt down you want to try and get as even a felt as possible so you don't want to have any random looseness anywhere you want it to be kind of the same kind of firmness all over so now I'm going to make my second sausage, my second cylinder. So I'm taking a smaller, narrower piece of wool this time. So it's 11 inches again in length, but this time it's two inches in its width. So it's an inch shorter than the last piece we used. And I'm going to roll this again into another Swiss roll. So again, just wrapping your wool nice and tightly so it's wrapped nice and firmly round ensuring that you're kind of holding all the slackness and keeping it nice and firm with your dominant hand and then rolling it with your non-dominant hand. So once I've got those ends down, I'm just going to secure that wall into place so it can't unravel anywhere. So still using my medium needles and I'm going to do the same thing that I did a moment ago with the larger sausage and just felting that end in. I'm not going to bother felting the other end this time. I'm going to leave that loose because I'm going to use that to attach this piece to our other piece, as you can see here. And I'm kind of keeping it this size at the moment. And then once I've properly felted it, I can then decide how long I want this piece to be. So I'm just going to take my embroidery scissors and I'm just going to cut that now so it's roughly about half the size. Pull that off. This wall wants to escape from me. Okay and I'm just going to hold that in position. So there we've got the body and our neck which is also going to incorporate our head. So I'm going to hold that neck in place and then using my medium needles again I'm just going to try and hold it so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to felt that onto our body shape at the end and it's kind of on an angle. So you don't want it to be completely 
upright and vertical, you want it to tilt forward on a slight angle like the neck of a dog would do. So what I would suggest you do is try and have an image of whatever it is you're creating whilst you're felting it so you can kind of look at how things sit and where things are placed and it just makes the process a lot more easy and seamless. So all I want to do at the moment is just secure this down, okay? I'm not kind of concentrating on shaping anything at the moment. I just want to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere and we can worry about the shaping side of things in a moment. So I'm just going to felt that top half down a bit as well. It's still got a bit of squidge to this, but don't worry about that because by the time we've shaped it and things, it's going to, it's going to be a lot firmer. So now that's attached, I'm going to take some more of my white Gotland and I'm just going to fold it into a very loose Swiss roll and I'm going to fold that against the, the, the join of the head, sorry, the neck and the body. And this is going to formulate our chest area. So if you remember, he's got his chest kind of protrudes forward slightly. So I'm just adding this section of bulk here to emulate that. So I'm just going to felt that down again with my medium needles. And I want to try and get this as seamless as possible so there isn't any clear joins. But don't worry too much if there is a join because we're going to add our top coat on later on. And that's going to hide all of those areas where we've attached things. So don't worry too much. But you want to get the kind of the, the general shape there and then you can continue to shape it once it's added in. But you want the transition to be quite gradual. You don't want there to be um, a, a sort of a vast transition between the neck, chest and body. You want it to be smooth so it all looks like one entire piece. That's the kind of the trick with needle felting, is adding these sections in, in these folded pieces of wool, but making it look like one whole piece. Okay, so there we go, there's our chest area. I'm just going to place a bit more around the, the neck and the chest just to blend that in a bit more. And I'm using a slightly thinner piece because I don't want to have um, too much of a join here. I just want it to be blended in nicely. So I've just folded that piece of wool over twice and I'm just going to felt that over. Okay, so there is our basic body shape. So what I'm going to do next is take some more of my wool bats whilst we're making the core and I'm going to make the head shape. So I'm just going to tear that in half. So I've got a relatively smallish piece. I'm just going to measure that. So that's two inches and the head is going to be half the size of the neck. So I'm just rolling this into another Swiss roll, roll shape, getting it nice and tight. And then I'm just gonna anchor that down into position with my needles. Just concentrate on that kind of soft bit there and get that nice and tightly felted. I'm just gonna take my time and I'm trying to get that more of a pointed end for the, the snout and the nose end of our, our head. But just continue to keep felting until you're happy with the, the firmness. And then I've got my embroidery scissors again. I'm just going to snip down the sides this time. I'm just going to splay that out so I've got something to attach, attach my head to. I don't want it to be too long. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to now felt that down using my medium needles into position onto the rest of the core of my sculpture. And again, you just want to make sure that it's on there. So don't worry too much about shaping at the moment. You just want to get it secured into place. So he looks a bit like he could be some kind of deformed duck at the moment, but don't worry, he's, uh, he's taking form. So I'm going to take some more wool and I'm going to make the top of his head now because we need somewhere for his eyes to go. So I'm just kind of rolling myself a kind of a squashed ball now just pull away that excess. I don't want it to be too large. And I'm just gonna fold that over and I'm gonna secure that down. 
So we want it to be like a rounded squashed ball here. So I'm just going to shape this and get it to a rough, the rough shape that I'm looking for. Again, I want it to be a medium firmness because I want to have that flexibility to then sculpt and add additional features on later on throughout the, uh, the tutorial. So I'm just making, just testing it and just seeing how firm it is. And I'm using my nails to protect my fingers from the needles. So I'm holding that down with my nails and I'm just felting and then giving it a little squidge. I'm going to roll that between my hands just so I can find any potential looseness um, that might be in the ball still. So it's still quite, quite squashy at the moment, but that's okay. I don't mind that. It helps me to felt it on. And I'm going to place that. I'm going to felt that onto the top of the head about there. So it's going to be a bit tricky trying to show you now, but I'm going to hold this down. This is when I become all fingers and thumbs. So hold this down against the mat and I'm just going to felt that very carefully around the peripherals onto the top of my dog's head. Just keep going until again it's all nicely secured into place. So I think that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to continue to kind of felt around the peripherals. I'm felting through the middle as well, but again, concentrating more on the outer edges of the piece. Okay, so there we go. So that's the next piece. So I'm just going to add another piece of batting over the top. And this is just to start getting rid of some of those joins so that when we add our brown wall later you've got this really seamless look so that's the only reason I'm doing this and it just adds a bit more bulk as well to the the head of our dog and this is just the core at the moment so it doesn't need to be particularly neat in its finish there we go and now he's starting to look like a sausage dog perfect so now I'm going to start adding this lovely brown Corridale wall. It's kind of like a medium brown colour and rather than using the technique we used with the pig earlier, because this is really lofty and I'm not too worried about the needle mark showing through because it's got that lovely thick quality to it, I think it's something like a 28 micron. I'm just going to go in with my fine needles and felt pieces directly onto the core of my sculpture. So I'm just using my needles again to felt down the second piece on its underside. And it's quite satisfying when you're doing this because you can really see him starting to take shape. I'm just making sure that I'm getting all of those bits of white covered over now. So you can't see any white areas. So you want to keep adding the brown Corridale wool until your sculpture is completely covered in that brown wool and you can't see any of the white shining through so it should look something like this when you've finished adding the brown wall and the next thing we're going to do is make his legs so we're going to take the cocktail stick and a small piece of the brown corridor wool and we're going to wrap that brown corridor wool around the kebab stick and we're actually going to make two legs out of this so i'm going to make it slightly longer so that i can then trim it down with my embroidery scissors in a moment once we've created that cylinder shape so i'm just twisting my brown corridor wool around the kebab stick until i get to a stage where i'm happy with the thickness of it and i'm just gonna anchor that down into place before i remove the stick get those little tiny ends felted down and then we can work on shaping it a bit more once we've removed the stick. So just take your stick out. And remember when you're felting, felting it with the stick inside, just felt around the sides, don't felt straight down the middle. And now that that's removed, I can felt this properly into the shape that I want. So I'm just using my fine needles again, my fine twisted needles in my pen, and just getting everything nice and firm. We want the legs to be firm because we want our dog to be able to stand up. So we just want to get a good firm felt on this. So I'm just giving it a roll so we can get the wool evenly distributed around the cylinder and then felting it again. And then we want to just work on felting in those ends as well. 
just giving it another roll with my fingers and you can actually lengthen the piece by rolling it too if you've uh, got a piece that's a bit too short just give it a roll with your fingers and you'll find that it does naturally lengthen as the fibers kind of manipulate themselves downwards so just keep moving the piece like a piece of dough so it doesn't stick to the mat I'm giving it another roll and the feel just to see if there's any looseness and then going back in again and then felting that looseness away so that's pretty good so I'm just going to trim that in half now so I'm just going to check those okay they're, they're going to be too long at the moment but that's fine let's go on to make the second pair so now I've got my legs and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim them a bit more so they're probably about two centimeters roughly in length but if you're following along with me in this tutorial, then obviously you can make your legs as long as you want in relation to the body size that you've already created. Your body might be a bit smaller or a bit larger than my body. So just gauge your size by checking out against your body, but also comparing it to images as well so you can get the right kind of look. So I've got my dog body in place. And I'm just going to now have a look and see where I want to place my legs. So I'm just going to hold that in place and I'm just going to slightly tack it down. It can be a bit tricky this bit because you're going to try to hold lots of things at the same time and it can be a bit all fingers and thumbs. But just felt down with your, again, I'm using my fine needles, not my double medium twisted needles because my fine needles are giving me the right amount of firmness to, to felt this down without it coming away and my medium needles would be a bit too hard so I've got my second leg so I'm just gonna look to put that in the same position on the opposite side I'm just gonna move that leg round actually it just doesn't look quite right there I want it to be a bit more to the side and that's the thing when you're doing this you don't have to felt it down and nail your colours to the mask straight away. Felt it down lightly so you can check it and look at it. And if it looks wrong, just take it off and start again. It's not a problem if you haven't felted it down too firmly. Okay, so I'm just checking that. I think that looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that proportion there. So I'm going to go in and add the second leg now. Doing the same thing. I'm going to felt the second leg in a bit more firmly because I'm happy that the other leg is the right position. And now I'm just going to go in with my back legs. So again, just tacking it in lightly in the first place. I've just moved it a bit because I just wasn't overly happy with that position. And then I'm just going to felt in the last fourth leg. So they're right at the back of the dog. And you're just kind of felting around the edges of your cylinder. So, so kind of using your needles on an angle and felting in a downwards diagonal like we have been doing before. And what we're going to do is add more Corridale around to the leg area so that we can get um, a smoother finish and everything looks more integrated. So you won't see any of those joins where we've added those legs in. So I'm just going to grab some more of my brown wool now. And this time I'm going to make his kind of back haunch, that kind of that back leg. And I'm just wrapping my corridor round in a kind of a very loose Swiss roll. And I'm just going to felt that down onto his, his little butt and get that felted in nice and firmly. And that's going to create that kind of slightly bulkier, circular, circular, can't say it, circ yellow shape um, around the the bottom of our dog and you're just looking to build this a little bit and I do it this way because now I've added the legs it kind of seals the leg in a bit more as well because we're putting some of that wool from the haunch over the leg and it kind of keeps that leg a bit more secure so I'm going to do the same thing on the other leg and I'm just going to keep felting that I might even add a little bit more in just to create more of that haunch like shape just building on that and making a bit of a feature of it as well um, because it's a real kind of you know it's a dog kind of a real dog thing to have that kind of slightly heavier set back end where they've got their their bottom and their thighs 
So I'm just building on that. And again, we're gonna add more of our brown wool in smaller pieces around this. So it's all gonna blend in nicely. It's not gonna look uneven. So I'm just gonna keep going until that's all felted down. And I'm just gonna add some brown wool now in between the legs as well. And that's just gonna integrate those pieces that I've just added a bit more. So just get that all neatly put into place. And then in a moment, I'm gonna add some more of my brown Coradale over the top, over the back of the dog as well, just to get all of those bits of bulk nice and smooth. What I wanna do here is just create that shape, that kind of slight angled shape around his haunch as well. So we're really creating that kind of that thigh shape that we're looking for. So I'm just going to add in some small pieces of Coradale to the front legs. And you would do this in most sculptures um, without an armature, is kind of add small pieces of wool over the top of limbs that you've added just to get those integrated in. And I'm just going to do the same now with the, the second front leg. Get that all nicely felted down. And you'll be able to see where you need to add extra wool. Like I can see that I need to add extra wool to the chest because there's a bit of white there. Unless of course you want to add a bit of white to that chest area. I can see that I need to add wool to the back because I need to cover over those bulky bits where I've added in the additional wool. I can see I need to add more brown wool to the top of the head as well. So you will see as you create your piece where you need to start adding a bit more of your your finishing wool to uh, get that nice smooth look to your creature. So I'm just going to add a relatively thick piece now and I'm making it a bit thicker because that kind of bottom area has got some quite um, large um, sort of lumpy pieces where I've added in that bulk and I just want to get that nice and smooth. The joins are quite sort of significant there. That's why I'm adding this bulkier piece so it can allow for those kind of larger joins so we can cover it up neatly and make it kind of blend in. I'm just feeding all that extra loose wool between the back legs and sort of under the belly. And once you've got a nice smooth shape and you're happy that everything's been covered and everything is nice and firm, we can start looking at adding in our facial features, so our nose and our eyes. Okay, and you can start to see where that shape around that haunch is being created. And I'm just concentrating a bit more around there, at kind of like felting round that area. So you're getting the roundness of the haunch, and then it kind of goes in slightly around the tummy. I just think it's a nice characteristic that we all pick up on when we sort of, or I certainly pick up on when I, when I look at a dog, just to give him more of a doggy-like body. And I don't want it to be um, too basic. I want to make my dog simple, but not sort of, you know, so simple that it's um, literally just like a tube with um, four legs on it and a head. I want it to have a bit more bit more shaping and this can take a bit of time but just do it gradually because you don't want to take it too far you want to just kind of keep checking so I'm just going to add that bit of wall to the chest there get that nicely covered over and then just sort of sweeping that extra chest wall around the leg area so you're kind of bringing it round you can really see he's really starting to look like a dog now. But once those facial features get added, it will really transform him. And then I'm just going to make his, his tail. So once again, I'm back to my little cocktail stick and I'm just going to wrap around another piece of the brown Coradale. This time I'm going to make it um, a thinner, a thinner cylinder 
because um, I don't want his tail to be really bulky because sausage dogs tend to have this kind of nice thin tail. So I don't want to take it too far. So I'm just going to twist that round until I get to a stage that I'm happy. And then I'm just going to, again, anchor that down. And again, I'm going to trim this once I've felted it so I can decide how long I want his tail to be. So I'm just carefully using my fine needles along the side and then just removing that cocktail stick from the center and then giving that a felt down. And when you make something slightly thinner on a cocktail stick, you'll find that it um, doesn't hold its shape quite as easily. So you just need to be a bit more gentle with it when you're felting it and take your time. But the rolling really helps to merge those fibers together. And just be really careful with your fingers here. Again, use your, use your nails to protect your fingers. And then once this has been felted down and I'm happy with its firmness, I can start thinking about roughly where I want to place this tail. Okay, so now we've got our tail. I've cut it to size to the length that I want. And like we did with the neck that we added to our sausage dog, I've just gone in with my embroidery scissors and I've just cut into the center of the tail. And then I've just kind of snipped the sides. So I've got these kind of pieces of wool folded outwards that I'm then using to anchor my tail down with and I'm just using my fine twisted needles to do that and just anchor it all into place and then once that's felted down I'm going to then use some more Corridale just to secure that down so it's not going to come off at all and then I'm just going to get that extra bit of brown Corridale now put around the base of the tail but you want to kind of felt it flatly. You don't want it to wrap round because you don't want to end up with any gathering around the base of the tail. So you want to place it as flat as you can on the base and then just felt that downwards into the back and bottom of your sculpture. That's the trick when you're adding any um, additional pieces um, and you're covering up those joins, just make sure that the pieces that you're adding to cover the joins are nice and flatly laid. Don't let them gather. And that is the base of your dog, of your sausage dog. So let's add some facial features and ears to him next. 